In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make this interactive slide in PowerPoint that if you click on the headers, content will appear. And if you click again, the content will disappear. Now, the nice thing is that you don't have to work in a linear way. So you can click on whichever topic that you want for the content to appear and then click again to make it disappear. If you want to follow along in the tutorial, this is the color palette that I've used so you can pause the video and add it to your slides. Now, if you like this style of presentation, I've made a 50 plus slide deck that you can use for your projects or business in the same style. You can download it via the link in the description below. This tutorial consists of two chapters, making the slide and secondly, making the animations. I've added the timestamps for your convenience, starting with number one, making the slide for this presentation. Let's start from a blank slide. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the background. So right click format background and we're going to give it a dark solid fill. Close the format background shape. And now we're going to add the tabs on the slide. So go to shapes. And then we're looking for this particular shape with a, a rectangle on top and a little bit of a curve at the bottom. So you go to the flowchart shapes and here you see this shape called document. You can drag it on the screen. Let's position it on the left side because we're going to create four in total. We want to remove the outline and then we're going to right click format shape and we want to give this a gradient color. We're going to choose the light purple linear and then let's try this dark corner at the bottom linear diagonal and that looks quite nice. And then we want to add a shape, a rectangle, but with two rounded corners. So go for the shape, drag it on top of the screen, hold shift while you rotate it to rotate it equally, position it on the previous shape, right click, send to back. And then you can choose, you can align it to the top if you want. Remove the outline and we're going to give this the light fill color. Here again, depends on the style that you want to go for. You can create it in the same width or you can make it a little bit smaller and that's the way I want to do it. Right click format shape on the tab and let's give this a shadow. So a drop shadow from the top right. Here you can play around with the transparency. I'm going to put a transparency on 76 and then increase the blur to about 10 points. Now let's add some text, add a text box and let's call this topic one. You can fill in anything that you want for the font. Let's use Avenir Next. Sub font, we're going to use bold. Make it light, center it in the middle, and increase the font size to about 24. Let's position it in the middle of the shape, maybe a little bit higher. That way it's optically balanced in the middle of the shape. Now let's add some more text boxes for the content. So here we give it, let's do lorem ipsum. We use Avenir Next, semi bold or demi bold. And let's make this purple. Reduce the size to, let's do 11. And then we add one more text box for the content. And here let's add some dummy text. Put it to font size 12 or 11. Let's align justify text and then move the edges a little bit. There we go. Position it below the title. Let's align them to the left go and insert an icon so we go to the insert tab icons and here let's look for space icons and then we can select let's choose four astronaut space shuttle and a planet blows up let's put these aside for a moment and then drag the first one in the center of the tab give it the same fill color as the type now let's select everything right click and group and then create a copy Hold control shift while you drag. Do that three times so you have four copies. And let's align distribute horizontally. We want to select all the shapes, so hold shift and select. Ungroup because we're going to edit some of the content. The icons, we want to use the different ones. Oh, we have to send them to the front first, bring the front. And then let's place the individual icons here on each of the tab. There we go, fourth one. And let's also give them a different shape color. Maybe align it with the topic. So go to format shape. And here we're choosing the darker version. Use the same angle. Go for want it darker again. Change the angle. And then the last one, the darkest. 
and change the angle as well. Let's modify the text, the text color, so that it aligns nicely with the title box. There we go. We do the same for the second one. And then let's give this different titles. So two, three, and four. And then we align the icon color with the color of that box. And that way everything looks quite balanced. There we go. That's a pretty nice looking slide. Let's position everything up a little bit. Voila. And this is how you create the content. Now for the next step, we're going to look at animating the slide. For that, we're going to add a rectangle on top, add it on top of the page, remove the outlines and give it the same color as the background. That way it disappears and we'll use it in a second. We want to select the content of the tab as well as the tab and group that part. So right click Ctrl G and then send it to the back. We do the same for the others. So select group, send to back, select content, the tab, Ctrl G, group, send to back, group, and send to back. The title and the card, we also want to group them together. So let's do that. Group, group, and group. Now we want to go to the selection pane. So go to arrange, selection pane. And here we want to give names because we want to keep our file organized. Select one and you see it highlights on the right. You can double click and let's call this top one. Do the same for the other. Top two, top three, and top four. That way everything is neatly organized. The top bar rectangle, let's call that top box. Now we want to select the content. So that is group. Let's call that content one. Select the second one, content two, third one, content three, and then eventually the fourth one, last one, content four. That way you can see they're all grouped together. But if we close them, we don't need to name these subparts. We know exactly what is what, and that will be useful in the next step. Now let's go to the animation step and open the animation pane. What we want is we want the top boxes to stay on the screen. So we don't have to animate those. We just want to animate the tabs. So I'm going to click, hold shift to select them all four. And I'm selecting only the tabs, so not the top boxes. We want to give this a fly in transition and from the top. So fly in from the top. Now, because we have this box on top, we can see that the tabs fly in from behind that box. So if we nicely align it at the top, it looks like the tabs drop out from the headers and that's a quite nice effect. We want to select those four fly in animations, reduce the timing or increase the timing to about 150 and put them all on click. This way, if we preview and we click, the first tab drops out, click again, the second one, the third and the fourth. Now this is very linear and not exactly what we want, but it's already the movement. Next, we want to select the four fly in effects, go to triggers, and here we want to select on click. So not as part of a click sequence, that is one, two, three, and four. We want to make sure that we link it to something specific. So for content one, the first tab, we want to link it when we click on top one. Do the same for content two, but this we link to top Two. So if we click on top two, that will appear. Three, we link to top three. And then, and then eventually the last one, content four, we link to top four. And this is why it's so important that we name and label our groups nicely. Otherwise, group 46 is very difficult to spot. Let's preview and see what we have. This means if I now click on one, you can see that the cursor changes and this topic becomes clickable. But I can also click on topic four. Now that will appear two and three. So it goes in a different order, which is quite nice. Now, if I click this, it will not disappear. It will do something funny and we can work around that as well. What we want to do for this is add out animations. So select the four tabs again and go to fly out. We want to add an extra animation. We also want the duration the same for these. So put it on 150 and put it on click. So all four of them are on click. Now we want to do the same. So we don't want it as part of a click sequence. We want it happening when we click on a certain thing. So content one, we want it to fly out when we click on top one. 
Content 2, we want to disappear when we click on Top 2. Content 3, link it to Top 3. And in Content 4, we link it to Top 4. And this way, if we zoom this out, we can see that we have multiple triggers. Top 1, so Topic 1, the header. If we click it once, it will appear, fly in. If we click it again, it will disappear. And that we have for top two, three, and four. Now, before we forget, we also want to set the animation right. So select the fly out animations. You can hold the control key to select multiple. And then we want to fly it out to the top because we don't want to fly it to the bottom. There we go. Here we can see a preview. That is quite nice. Now let's preview what we have. And if we now click on, for example, topic two, we can see the mouse cursor changes. Click, it will appear. Click on topic four, it appears. Click on two again, it disappears. And we can really customize our movement so we can make everything appear or disappear in the order that we want. So there's no fixed order in having something appear or disappear on the slide, which I think is a quite interactive way of showing something on a screen. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about PowerPoint, please watch the video on the screen right now.